fishing only plant. They take slabs from uh, from Edgar Thompson now. They make those slabs into uh, flat roll sheet steel. There's not a whole lot to see up there. It's called the Mill on the Hill. Uh, they, uh, you can see it's up on the top of the hill rather than being down the valley. And that's one of the only facilities that's still working. The yeah, Urban Works uh, still operating intensely. Uh, they, it's a, you can see on these, barely on these uh, rail cars in front of us, there are steel slabs. The slabs are about eight inches thick, eight to ten inches thick, and they use these slabs in there on the hot strip mill. And then they have cold rolling facilities, and they just take them right down this little railroad here and into this plant next door, which is the General Motors uh, Fisher Body Works. You can see on those rail cars it says ET Works. It's Edgar Thompson Works, and those are specially designed rail cars that carry slabs between Edgar Thompson and Irvin. That's about three miles. So, as you can tell, by the time the slabs get up here, they're cold and they have to be completely reheated, which is a very expensive proposition. Keep that much steel to temperature. About 1920, U.S. Steel built, began to build byproduct coke ovens here in Clarendon to take advantage of the mills that they have down in, the, uh, in Fayette, Green County. In about 1920, U.S. Steel began to build byproduct coke ovens here in uh, Clareton, and they've been adding on ever since. Uh, they built them in order to take advantage of the proximity to all the mines that they have down in uh, Washington and Fayette counties, Greene counties. It's uh, the largest byproduct coke facility in the world. Coke is one of the basic products that's used to make iron. It's the fuel for making iron. It's a very dirty process, and uh, all of the uh, pipes and things you see are uh, the uh, gases and things being shipped around. And not only is coke made, but when the coal is baked, a lot of tars and smoke and things like that are released, and that uh, a lot of that is used as byproducts sold or shipped to other places along the valley for use as fuel. The latest battery that was built in here is the Battery B, built in 1982, and it's uh, one of the more, one of the most uh, efficient coke facilities in the world. This plant will continue to work as long as the mines in. Uh, And the coal, uh, the, these cars in the foreground hold coke. You, you can tell the difference between coke and coal. Coke is uh, silvery looking. There's a terrific stench that comes off this. Pain works, and what we're looking at right now is what's left of the famous Dorothy furnace, which is. Uh, that they did a feasibility study on trying to rebuild all that's left of the two step uh, support stands there. Uh, the furnace itself is lying on its side. The three tanks behind the support stands are the, uh, the blast ovens where the, the air was heated before it was blasted into the furnace. And as we look down along, you see the older blast furnaces and you can see that they're much smaller. They were much smaller than Dorothy was. This is the upstream end of the Duquesne Works. The hot end of the works. 
blast furnaces here. Dorothy last operated in about 1983 when the production of steel for the Mon Valley Works was switched over to Edgar Thompson. These blast furnaces have been inactive since then. Duquesne has Dorothy was the largest blast furnace in the valley. Had a hearth diameter of about 28, 29 feet. The smaller furnaces here have hearth diameters of about 23 feet. A modern blast furnace uh, maximum efficiency has a hearth diameter of about 45 feet. Another view of the uh, blast furnaces at Duquesne. Again, this is this is Dorothy here. What's left of it? And moving on downstream, come to the older furnaces. These are two blast furnaces, one at either end with the uh, with the uh, hot air ovens in the middle. Those ovens were used to heat the air before it was blasted into the furnace. And then uh, another set of even older furnaces on downstream a little bit there. As you can see, these have very poor air quality controls. The uh, stacks from the, uh, the air ovens go straight up into the, into the sky, and uh, there's very little pollution control on them. One of the reasons that uh, these don't work anymore. here and this is the downstream very tail end of the Duquesne works and there you see a uh, slag pot car that's been brightly painted for some reason sitting there it looks like it's full of concrete I think they're using it for a backstop or something in the switching yard and as you move down Duquesne works ends right there and as you move downstream across the river you see the beginning of the Edgar Thompson works and Edgar Thompson stretches down into Braddock. And you can see all the activity that's going on down there at Edgar Thompson.